Hello. Oh, right Good morning. I'm Carolyn Bailey. I'm a member of Unity of the Hill Country, and I welcome you to Unity of the Hill Country, where we offer a positive path for spiritual living. Thank you all for being here. Let us pray. For we give thanks for this beautiful day, full of possibilities. We feel God's presence and power in us and around us. We are truly blessed, feeling wholeness. We extend this blessing to everybody. We bless all people regardless of what they believe or who they are. We know that there are many paths to God and many names for God, but only one God. And God is expressing through all creation. We come together this morning to experience and express the Christ Spirit 
that dwells within each of us. And so it is. Amen. If you're joining us on Facebook, Facebook from home, we would like to take a moment to say welcome into Connecting Consciousness. Please silence your phones so that this does not disturb our gathering. Feel free to comment and introduce yourselves, and this is our time to be together and share in love. Feel free to post and tweet about Unity of the Hill Country. Unity is a global, inclusive, spiritual community. We offer practical, uplifting resources to help people of all faiths apply positive spiritual principles. Unity provides practical teaching to help people live healthy, prosperous, and meaningful lives. If you will join me in our mission and vision statement to live consciously, celebrating the divine potential in all. As well as the statement of faith, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in this universe, God the good, the omnipotent. And now Reverend Bob has some announcements. First, I want to show you this video. <clears throat> People don't go to church. I can't come to church until I get my life together. Church is how I got my life together. Church is filled with a bunch of hypocrites. And there's always room for one more. All they care about is your money. They care about me, not about my money. Is there some kind of dress code? Yes, the code is wear some clothes. Church, it just makes me nervous. I was nervous at first, and then I felt right at home. I'm sure I believe everything that you believe. But you can still belong. Church is for wimpy, girly men. You want to sit out again? If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't want me. If you knew me and what I've done, you wouldn't be worried. come to my church even if you were brought up Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Jewish, Mormon, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Church of Christ, Southern Baptist, a little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing. See, it's not about a religion, it's about a relationship. So please, come to my church. Where nobody's perfect. Where beginners are welcome. Where socks are optional. But grace is required. Where forgiveness is offered. Where hope is alive. And where it's okay to not be okay. Really. <laughs> Just wanted to remind you, obviously we've got you know, the little business card with the, with the blue circle on it that like to, you just carry around, be able to slip to people when they're, they're expressing some concern about their spirituality or whatever. Um, we... Uh, I want to go, I know last week I had forgotten to give you the details on the, on the lockbox out here, but we've got this uh, meditation chapel. And, you know, back uh, a few months ago, someone said, well, I'd love to get in there any time, any day if I could. Is there a way we can do that? So we installed this lockbox, which is about the size of your hand. And then you've got these four dials. You just dial in the address of the church, 1016, and then you push down on this lever and it pops open. And then you'll find a key in there. There's also a little miniature flashlight if, you're, if it's after dark. Um, so 
and then you just put the key back in there, close the door, and it locks again. So that's available for you or for anyone else who's just looking for something else. They just need to get away, I know. A few, I was talking last week with a woman who was taking care of her parents, and she just needs to get some place she can go and decompress <laughs> and feel safe and, and turn inward. So she was very happy to hear about that. Uh, last week we kind of put out there, we kind of put out a little bit of an anxious energy. And so the board uh, actually got together twice this week, including yesterday morning, we got together with um, Jackie Lyles, who's, a, who's one of these women who does amazing work in just coaching organizations on how to be better. And so we decided to look at what do we want to do over the next 90 days. And as you see up here, where we recognize we just... We want to focus on helping Hill Country people. It seems like a lot of people when they hear about volunteering and of course the whole idea of putting good energy out, they might want to eh, serve inside of our walls, but what about outside of the walls? So we came up with some ideas of connecting with various organizations and we're open to your suggestions as well. But one of the things we're hearing is that here the school district just started this mentoring program They've got like about 150 kids that they haven't been able to match up with yet. You know, just <sighs> helping them, you know, maybe do a little tutoring or reading or whatever, but just being able to give them some good energy to express a loving kindness towards them. So if, you, if you're interested in that, stay tuned and all. I would mentioned in recent weeks the LGBTQ plus youth group is going to start on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, so uh, any, if you know any teen that's having their challenges with <laughs> gender identity and fitting in, that's a place for just to kind of get together socially, parents and their kids. And I talked to a few people who are recommending their teen come even if they haven't come out to their parents yet, you know, so you can find a supportive atmosphere. So that's going on. Now you'll notice maybe when you came in, there's a table of books out there. And even if you have taken one of our prosperity courses or re read a prosperity book, I want you on the way out to just look at the table, see which one just seems to speak to you by, you know, judge the book by its cover and then grab one and read this so that we can build a consciousness together that allows us to <laughs> get out of the way of the flow of the, of the universe in and through this place. And as we did last week, I'm just going to, let's go ahead and do a prayer together. So we'll start with the words we accept. We accept the gift of spiritual power and have the power to create our continued growth and success. The infinite power of God enlightens our minds and arouses our hearts giving us the power to say and do what needs to be done for the highest good of all. And now I'm going to pass the baton to our board president who submitted that prayer for us to work with together. And I would like to say that many of you have the opportunity to help serve as we are developing various ministries within this community. And this is a very pivotal focus point in this community. So I'm just saying be aware and feel free to talk to Bob about what you would be willing to offer in service. I'm especially excited about the uh, mentoring service that we have so many young people that need this assistance. So keep that in your thoughts and prayers. The Daily Word helps keep the Unity Movement connected mm -hmm. worldwide since 1924. And this week's reader is Robin Stewart.
I'm brand new at this. So if I make mistakes, just have a little patience. <laughs> Today's daily word, the word is wonder. Oh, it feels so good when it rolls around in your mind. Wonder. The first affirmation, which you can follow along with me, is I view my life through the eyes of wonder. I feel inspired watching a young child discovering new things, eyes wide with awe and wonder. Even the smallest experiences, feeling the tickle of a butterfly's wings this on the skin, or the blowing of weeds on a dandelion. Oh, I have done that myself. Are marvelous and joyful. I think of this when disappointing life expectations chip away at my sense of awe and appreciation. Today, I let go of disillusionment and open my heart, my eyes, to once again live in wonder. As I view life anew, I renew my belief in the goodness of life and all people. I open myself to the expected, unexpected treasures happening all around, every day, all day. Wonder is a precious gift, one I use to appreciate the marvels unfolding before me. And in Acts 3.10, the Bible says they will be filled with wonder and amazement at what has happened to him. And again, back to our affirmation, I view my life through eyes of wonder, and the word wonder is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The unity movement started in 1889 with answered prayer. Myrtle Fillmore was healed of tuberculosis. We are honored to pray with you. Place a prayer request in the prayer box next to the door, or you may email us or go to unityofthehillcountry.org and click on ministries. Please join us now in our congregational song, I Am the Radiant Life of God. And you can follow along with the lyrics on the screen. The music team will help us with the melody. Following that, we will prepare for our period of meditation with a song, All Is Well. Thank you. If you'd like to stand and join us, as you are able, um, Danny's going to help you with some of the congregational words at the end of each line, too. <laughs> He's star today. I am the radiant life of God. I am, I am the radiant life of God. I am the health, the strength, vitality, and energy, the radiant life of God. I am. I am the wonderful love of God. I am. I am the wonderful love of God. I am. The peace, the joy, serenity, and harmony, the wonderful love of God. I am. I am the wisdom and power of God. I am. I am the wisdom and power of God. Prosperity and happiness, the wisdom and power of God. I am. I am the radiant life of God. I am. I am the radiant life of God. I am. The health, the strength, vitality, and energy, the radiant life of God. I am. I am the radiant life of God. I am.
this world, and I am grateful. All this world, and now it's time to let it go. All this world, and I am grateful. Life is good, and all is well. Life is good. And so it is, that presence, that power, that love is in and around us right now. If you haven't already, let's begin our meditation and prayer time by closing our eyes and grounding our bodies. Feel the back of the chair against your back. Feel your feet on the floor grounding the energy as if you are growing roots. And then focusing on the tip of your nose. Is it feeling warm or cool at the moment? Our bodies are safe and secure. Let's draw our focus now inward to our heart. Then from our heart to the very center of our torso, the gateway of chi, of loving energy that radiates outward. So as we take all of the concerns, the assumptions, and the blocks to that energy, we just feel every cell in our body just sparkle and vibrate with love. In unity, when we take time to meditate and pray, we start by praying for others. So bring to mind any other individuals, groups, situations, misperceptions that you'd like to pray for now. We include all of the prayer requests received here at Unity of the Hill Country. And without knowing the specifics, we can see and know that loving energy working in and through each request. We see the divine potential, the divine perfection in each of these requests expressing as wholeness, as its highest good. Let's pray for our amazing community here. Let's see unity of the hill country thriving in consciousness, people, and revenues today and every day hereafter. The God presence as unity of the hill country is a divine magnet attracting anyone who can benefit from who we are and what we are about. Attracting health, prosperity, love, and joy to unity of the hill country and all who are guided here today and every day hereafter. And I invite you to words I'm about to speak to take them as your own words in prayer. The great creative energies of God are at work in my life. Always renewing, restoring, and refreshing. I open my mind to the divine mind. I take a fresh look at my life. In this week ahead, I consider my habits, my beliefs, my basic assumptions, the, my way of acting or reacting. And may I realize that I always have a choice in any moment. The judgment day is today and right now. 
as we use our power of discernment. And as I prepare for two minutes of silence, I embrace and express the divine idea of wisdom and discernment in the silence. Thank you. Thank you, God, divine creator of all, for your, per your presence in to us, through us, and as us. I embrace and express the divine ideas that are right and perfect for me to express. And as I move through this coming week, I keep in the forefront of my mind the four agreements and do my best to express them. Be impeccable with my word. I will not take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. And I will do the best that I can. And for my ever-growing awareness of the omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence of God, I open my heart to chakra and pour forth gratitude. I pray these things in the name, nature, and the power that we know is symbolized by Jesus Christ. And as we draw our focus back to this sanctuary and release this prayer into the spiritual realm, let's ponder the words of the invocation written by one of our founders, Charles Fillmore. We are now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit, and by divine wisdom now erase our mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. Amen.
Okay, especially for those people watching online, let's do a virtual hug. Good morning. And I did forget to mention, if you're not watching online and you'd like one of these prosperity books, just let us know your name and address. We'll send it to you or drop it off to you one way or the other. Just let us know at unityhillcountry.org. I want to show you a picture of uh, Booker T. Washington. As you can see, you know, the years that he lived. So when he was born, his mother was a slave, but within 10 years, she wasn't a slave. And Booker T. was a pretty, pretty shrewd fellow. Uh, he got trained at the Hampton Institute. You know, back then, it seems like so many colleges were focusing on teaching teachers how to teach or be teaching ministers how to be ministers. And so he was excited when he got the opportunity at age 25 to go to Tuskegee, Alabama and start the Tuskegee Institute. And so he got there in like 1880 and in 1881 he was feeling a little discouraged you know, trying to get this new school going. Um, and so he was walking in one of the neighborhoods and all of a sudden this woman, a lady of the house, comes running out with some urgency and looks at Booker T and says, chop up a cord of wood and bring it into the kitchen. And then she ran back into the kitchen. And Booker T was like, yeah, okay. So he chopped up a cord of wood, brought it into the kitchen, and a couple of the servants there were kind of like, Mr. Washington, what are you doing? And he, said, he explained the situation. He, goes, and he went on his way. A little bit later, the servant explained to the lady of the house <laughs> who this fellow was. The next day, Booker T. went to his office, and who's sitting outside? The lady of the house. And she apologized profusely. She says, I didn't know. You know, I just I came running out and just assumed you were one of our hired hands. I feel so bad. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. He says, oh, don't mind working a little bit. I don't mind helping other people, especially when I'm helping one of my friends. And they both smiled, and they sat and talked for a couple of hours about what they were attempting to do there at the Tuskegee Institute, be, be open, especially you know, to people of color and people who just had been released from slavery, about you know, how to do a whole variety of things, whether it was agricultural or, or business or teaching. And she caught the fire, so to speak, of Tuskegee Institute. And she decided, OK, I'm going to advocate for this. I want to help these people uh, who, who they're trying to reach. And she also became an advocate as a fundraiser in making sure that the Tuskegee Institute got going. And of course, now it's Tuskegee University. And it's had its roller coaster of experiences and the like which I won't go into the details right now. We are exploring the book, uh, The Four Agreements, which really, uh, came out about 25 years ago. And it was written by Don Miguel Ruiz. He was an MD. He was a surgeon in Mexico. And as he was exploring the science of medicine, he <laughs> would talk with his family, and it turns out he came from a long line of shamans the indigenous people of Mexico, the Toltecs. And so he decided, you know, to write this little book, Four Agreements, about we be who we want to be in this world. He's now written about a dozen more books since then. But so many people have resonated with this, and uh, I, so I just wanted to share these four agreements with you. Now, last week I focused on the first two, kind of fleshing them out. So if you want to see the lesson we did last week, it's on unityhillcountry.org or on our YouTube page. Uh, so you can catch that and just see what I had to say last week. So um, we start out with the four agreements. Be impeccable with your word. Never take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. And do the best you can. Be impeccable with your word. <coughs> There's the concept of being, you know, if we make a pledge or a promise, following through with it. But also, 
there's the spoken word, which actually puts out a vibration into the universe and affects molecules and atoms and allows us to kind of co-create with this creative energy that is God. In the book, Don writes, never underestimate the power of your spoken word. The word is not just a sound or a written symbol. The word is a force. It is the power you have to express and communicate, to think and thereby to create the events in your life. You can speak. The word is the most powerful tool you have as a human being. It is a tool of magic, but like a saber a sword with two edges. Your word can either create your most beautiful dream or your word can destroy everything around you. Number two, never take anything personally. And as I shared last week, well, that's kind of our default mode. You know, as we move through any given day, it's kind of like, okay, well, how is this going to affect me? <laughs> and do I want it to affect me? That sort of thing. We filter it through the experiences we've had in the past. And so let's move on to number three and flesh that out a little bit. Don't make assumptions. I think it was a teenager, you know, when I heard the, when you assume, you make an ass of you and me. And um, years ago at Unity Center up in Kansas and it's about 30 miles west of Kansas City, and it's, of course, the home of the University of Kansas. There, it was East, and one of the volunteers, uh, you know, it was very excited about, you know, the, they came in, like, on the Saturday, and they were putting, you know, all of the candy and the plastic eggs, and they are going to do an Easter egg hunt for, for the rather thriving youth program at the time. Uh, and when she... The, volunteer came in the next day, she also liked to bring silk flowers in, in pots, and so she thought, well, we're doing the, we're doing this egg search, or whatever they call it, <laughs> I'm going to put some of these silk flowers outside. And she was discovering that these silk flowers were getting blown over, you know, in this pot, so she thought, well, you know, I just need to weight this down, and they had some leftover these plastic eggs, so she put rocks in these eggs and put them in the pot to keep the pot stable, you know, and then just let it go. And after the Easter egg hunt, uh, she goes, she's cleaning up and she goes outside and here's the silk flower pot on its side, and there are no eggs in the, ba in the, in the pot. And so it was like, oh, <laughs> no. Somewhere in our community, there's a kid who's opening up this plastic egg and finding rocks. Yeah, and they and, they, and there were some assumptions made. It's like you know, well now you see, when you misbehave, Santa Claus puts coal in your stocking, but the Easter Bunny puts rocks in your eggs. You know that kind of a stuff. And so the minister and her were talking about it. And then the next Sunday, you know, like I usually get up and share a few things before we get really rolling. And the minister, there, <laughs> she got up and talked about the situation, you know, and apologized. <clears throat> a woman came up after the service. <clears throat> you know, came to talk to her as the minister near the door. And she says, my daughter opened those eggs. And the minister immediately jumped into apologizing mode. She said, no, 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 it was perfect. It was divine order. <laughs> My daughter just recently got really enthralled with geology, and she was starting a rock collection. <laughs> you know, so sometimes we assume that you know, something is going to be horrible, when maybe it's just the thing that we need. <clears throat> You'll notice that these, uh, you know, for these four overlap and build upon each other so we assume behavior and a lot of times we take it personally. Why is this person doing this to me? Well, I coach people to remove those last few words. Why is this person doing this? That's much more appropriate because they're probably not doing it to you. <laughs> they're doing it because they just think it's the right thing to do in the moment. There were no personal issues at the time. So our minds are meaning-making machines. We, find, we have these experiences and if it doesn't make sense, we work on it and suddenly we make sense of it. 
And there are times, you know, one of the greatest exercises I've had in my lifetime is getting to the point of being okay with the mystery, <laughs> being okay with the incongruence. I have no clue as to what this means. You know, God, guide me on this one because I haven't got a clue. And show me the good in this situation. But we do have assumptions, and it helps us, you know, move through the day. We assume that the chair we're sitting on is going to hold us up. We assume that the sun will rise every morning. You know, we, we have these assumptions that people in other cars are paying attention and follow the traffic laws, you know. But occasionally, you know, um, our assumptions don't quite. <laughs> I was thinking about this thing about the sun rising every morning, and here we've got these two eclipses you know, coming up, you know, one in October and one in April. But I was talking with somebody before the service who was saying how, you know, tomorrow night at the Dietert Center, the library board is going to have a meeting, and there are all of these people that are going to come and talk about all that pornography they've got in the library. You know, and uh, and how you know, how much of our politics is infused with a common purpose? People want us to have a wonderful country, a love, a wonderful community. We want our families to thrive, but there are a lot of people who have been misled. <laughs> as one as one pundit I know says, it goes beyond being misinformed to being malinformed. But if you get people riled up and expressing outrage. You know, they're not paying attention to the other things that are going on. And, uh, you know, and if someone is angry all of the time, uh, they're not allowing that love and that thing to flow through them. So if you happen to want to show up at the Dietert Center tomorrow, <laughs> it's at 6 o'clock? Yeah, 6 o'clock. And make your, make your presence known if you do that. But we think, we feel... We assume, and a lot of times we have to let go of those old assumptions we had about life. Number four is, is do the best that you can. I know many of you are familiar with Reverend Eric Butterworth. In fact, that book I was holding up, Spiritual Economics, is by him. He's a unity minister who wrote you know, more than a dozen books. But uh, he <laughs> I, I've got a lot of his recordings just listening. I mean, you know, I want to through osmosis, get <laughs> all of this wonderful unity wisdom somehow in my heart so I can share it with you. But he said he would love it when someone would come to him and say, well, you know, if I were you, this is what I'd do. And over the years, Eric developed the habit of when someone would come to him and say, Eric would respond, <clears throat> if you were me, you'd be doing exactly what I do because you were me. You know, now if you want to offer some unsolicited advice, that's another thing. You know, but it's like, yeah, we'd be the best that we can. Now I've shared with you <laughs> that I am a recovering perfectionist. So when this book came out, you know, I was reading through the four agreements. I made some assumptions about each of the agreements. And as a recovering perfectionist, I read the words, do the best that you can. And yet I was feeling, I have to act perfectly at all times. Oh, you know. <laughs> and so many of us have that burden upon us. Oh, I have an image to keep. <laughs> I, I'm a minister. If people see me walking around in my slippers and robe in the neighborhood, they're going to think I'm nuts. That kind of stuff, you know, just gets piled on. So... <clears throat> Each in that I was sharing with the, with the board this week as we're talking about you know, setting priorities. Yeah, I find every week I come in after my days off on Monday and Tuesday, I come in on Wednesday, and it's like, okay, what needs to be done this week? And I might come up with a list of 80, 80 things, but then I come up with priorities. You know, there are things that are important, but then there are things that are urgent. And so I've learned that I need to let go of the idea that I will get all 80 of them done and celebrate if I make it to 20. You know, but the key is it's okay. You know, do the best you can under the circumstances. And sometimes so much of what we do depends upon the circumstances. A woman was getting ready to uh, have a big birthday party for her seventh grader, and he was suddenly firefighters, you know, and so she had had 
to a friend of a friend. She arranged a visit to the local firehouse. You know, they're going to have the birthday party. So she went to the, this wonderful bakery in their town and get a sheet cake. And like, well, what do you want on it? And so she described the situation. She says, well, you know, go ahead and write it here on this. And I'll leave it for the cake decorator. It'll take care of it tonight. So she came in the next day, and she's looking at the sheet cake, and she is in awe. It's a masterpiece, a detailed firehouse, a detailed fire truck, hoses coiled and strung out, fire hydrants, a Dalmatian dog, two firefighters waving, you know. <laughs> she said, oh, my God, this is wonderful. How much is this going to cost you? Standard rate. So, well, give my compliments to the, the cake decorator. And the woman leaned over and said, well, truth be told, you know, the cake decorator told me this morning that he came in prepared to do the four hours of his shift where he does the cake decorating, and yours was the only order. So he had four hours <laughs> to let his creativity flow. You know? And it's like, yeah, you know, sometimes it's like that. I can create a masterpiece. I know yesterday when the board was meeting, I was taking care of something, and I came in, and we were supposed to draw a little picture, and I had 30 seconds, you know. Now here I am, the old master art student, and it's kind of like, you know, what can I do in 30 seconds? <laughs> but I did put something down to represent what my feelings were. So recognize these various aspects. Okay, there's the amount of time we have that allows us to calibrate doing the best that we can in this particular moment. There are our moods. What's your mood today? The psychologist Joseph Bailey says, have you ever noticed that when you wake up in a bad mood, the mirror, the world is a mirror to you? Everyone else you encounter seems to be in a bad mood. Then there's our health. Yeah, it can be a little challenging doing our best if we're having some sort of a health challenge. And then there's new information that can make a difference. You know, having new information allows me to just, okay, well, wait a minute. That assumption, I've got to throw out the window. There was a 75-year-old uh, man who was describing at his birthday party to his friends what kept him vital, what kept him going. He was one of these guys who looks like he's you know, 20, 30 years younger than he is. He said, when I was 55, I came across this concept of doing the best that I could. And someone suggested, do, give something for yourself to remind you to do your best. And he said, you know, I, I made the decision that I was going to do something special every weekend. He says, so I did the calculation. I had been on this earth through 2,860 weekends. <laughs> and I came up with this idea. I calculated how many weekends will I encounter between age 55 and 75. And he did the math and came up with 1,040 weekends. And this idea came to him, and he went out and bought these big jars, and he got 1,040 marbles and put it in the jar. And so he was describing how every Saturday when he'd wake up, you know, that jar was kind of in a strategic place. He'd take one of the marbles, and he'd head out for the weekend with that reminder, you know, in, in his pocket or in his hand that I'm going to do the best I can under these circumstances. So it's doing random acts of kindness or whatever. And he says, and I usually give away the marble end of the weekend, usually to a kid. He said, it changed the way I approach my weekends. It changed my way of life. He said, what can I do to help other people? Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, finish each day and be done with it. You've done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities have probably crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. <laughs> Tomorrow is a new day. You shall begin it serenely and with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. So as a recovering perfectionist, I am getting better and better at forgiving myself and forgiving others. 
There's a Bible verse I want to share with you, and it was stunning to me because, you know, we went to the seminary and we're looking through these things. There are these, you know, four books called Gospels at the beginning of the Christian Testament. It used to be called the New Testament. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and each of these were written for a different constituency. You know, they're trying to speak to different people. Now, Mark is the shortest, but it was also the first one that was written. And there is this Bible verse that I had never heard before, and I'll bet... Even if you've gone to church most of your life, you haven't heard this either. But it's the third chapter of Mark. So yeah, we're just three chapters in. Gospel of Mark, third chapter, 28th verse. Truly, God, this is Jesus talking. Truly, I say to you, whatever blasphemies we utter, and all sins will be forgiven of all human beings. I'll read that again. <laughs> Mark 3.28. Truly I say to you, whatever blasphemies we utter, and all sins will be forgiven of all human beings. So Mark wrote the gospel, and in the next three people kind of layered in some expectations and assumptions as to how you can do these things. So let's go ahead and review the, the four agreements. Be impeccable with your word. Never take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Do the best that you can. Now, earlier I mentioned the psychologist um, or psychiatrist Joseph Bailey. He was actually the president of the Minneapolis Institute of Mental Health. And a lot of people have writ read his book, The Serenity Principle. And in here he gives very much wind advice. He says, the past is no longer real. It was real when it happened. Regardless of how pleasant or unpleasant it was, they were very real at that time, but they're not real now. Everyone and everything connected with an incident that we are holding from the past, good or bad, is now changed. In today's reality, your past is non-existent. It's only we who keep things real in our minds if we choose to. But we don't have to. We can change the meaning of the situation. We can let them go because they have no reality of their own, no power, no influence except that which we give them. I have a two-minute video I want to share with you from Steve Hartman of the CBS Evening News. Being a custodian here at Trinity High School in Euless, Texas, isn't exactly the most important job in America. But don't tell that. You all do that trash? To the custodian. If I clean a toilet and you sit on that toilet, you can rest assured that's the cleanest toilet you will ever sit on. I'll take your word for that. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Clark takes his job that seriously. But his greatest asset has nothing to do with his cleaning. It's his counseling. We can sit on this rock right here. Not long after he started at Trinity 25 years ago, Charles Clark began pulling kids aside. Y'all anxious for to find out who our new coach going to be? Kids he thought might be falling through the cracks. I'm not asking you to be a role scholar. Kids he thought might need a little mentoring. Before you get in trouble, you're going to call me, right? Kids like 17-year-old right. Jesse Willewa. All right there. Mr. Clark's been looking out for me ever since I've been here. I can tell Mr. Clark anything. I know he's going to give me his honest opinion. He's very wise. Very loving. I'm going to talk to you. They have never had a man tell them they love them before. Once they trust you and they know you love them, you can get them to buy into what you're selling. What does the school counselor think of you? Oh, they get most of my clients come from the <laughs> counselors. <laughs> really? That's very true. Peggy McIntyre is a clinical counselor at Trinity with a master's in social work. But she says Charles has a better way with certain kids. He's worked with a lot of our students here who ended up going to college, who ended up doing really well. So he gets results. He gets results. He sure does. He sure does. Now, you don't want to wait till your senior year. By all accounts, this custodian has helped dozens of kids turn their lives around. Not because it was his job, but because it needed to be done. I'm proud of you as a young man. And there's a lesson in there for anyone who feels trapped <laughs> by their title. Hey, now, how you doing? You gonna tell me I don't have a good life? This custodial thing is working good for me. <laughs> Steve Hartman, on the road in Euless, Texas. I got a great life.
So earlier we were talking about, you know, tutoring and mentoring. Yeah, just love them in an appropriate way and allow them to love you back. From the book of Job, 27th chapter, 3rd verse. As long as my breath is in me and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips will not speak falsehoods. My tongue will not utter deceit. Far be it from me to say that you are right. Till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. I will hold fast in my righteousness. I will not let it go. My heart does not reproach me for any of my days. May you always be open to God's guidance and grace. Let's prepare for music.
song. If this is your first time at Unity, we're glad you are here. And we hope that you will find a place of belonging with like-minded people. We teach, unit, uh, we teach spiritual tools, yes we do, that can help you no matter what is going on in your life. Generosity is important to us. We will donate $5 to a local charity of your choice. Just write your email on a card in our welcome packet and an usher will collect it with the offering or you can leave it in the office. We don't want to put you on the spot, but raise your hand if you would like to have a welcome packet or you can pick one up on your way out, whichever is comfortable for you. We now have the opportunity to support our spiritual community. If you would like to donate by credit card, go to our website, unityofthehillcountry.org, and click on the, quote, donate button, or simply scan the QR code on your handout, and we'll take you straight to our secure uh, website. Please consider setting up an automatic weekly or monthly contribution. If you would prefer to mail us a check, please mail them to Unity of the Hill Country, 1016 Jefferson Street, Kerrville, Texas, 78028. And we thank you in advance for your generosity. If the ushers would come forward. Together, let us say our offertory blessings, the divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I send it forth with my blessings and my love. Thank you. open our hearts in gratitude for these freely given donations. We send these gifts forward through our <coughs> congregation and into our world, blessing all that it affects. We thank you. We have some announcements. Please refer to the schedule of events on the back of your takeaway handouts. A Course in Miracles, facilitated by Charles Driggs, has moved their meetings to 10 a.m. on Mondays. This meeting is only on Zoom until resuming in person on September the 11th. Please let us know if you are interested in participating, and we will put you in touch with Charles. The Serenity Al-Anon meets at noon on Mondays if you have a friend or loved one suffering from addiction and you need support, please visit Al-Anon. Codependence Anonymous meets weekly on Thursdays at 7 p.m. And this is an open meeting for anyone interested. Please feel free to visit coda.org for more information. Center of Calm Meditation Group meets weekly at 10.30 a.m. on Thursdays. You will also have the opportunity to use the Meditation Chapel before services on Sunday starting at 10.15. And we encourage 
people to come before service and meditate and prepare. If you are on Facebook, join our new group, Unity Spiritual Network, to stay connected with our community online. Because we care about and love our church family, we want to let you know that there is a team member available for you. Please let us know if you or a fellow member is ill, has an accident, is in the hospital, needs something delivered to them, needs assistance in their home, or simple needs to hear a friendly voice. We are here for you. Please contact our office if any services that you would like to have. And you can also contact Terry, Terry Conatori um, and we can give you that number uh, at the office for anybody that needs it. And if you'd like an opportunity to serve our community or would like to start a special project, please let us know. There are many ways to get involved in our community. And with that, we have come to the end of our gathering. And please circle up, join hands as we sing the peace song, followed by our prayer of protection, and please stay for fellowship afterwards. Mm -hmm.